Something else that you're going to find is a lot of folk don't understand libertarianism. Now, I've never been a supporter of these libertarian parties like the one you see in the United States. So there's an argument by the Young Turks, Hassan Piker, who makes a critique against libertarianism. So libertarianism is a sexy concept right now. You might have heard about it because of third party candidate Gary Johnson, who d called Donald Trump a pussy. 3,000 mile mountain bike ride here, uh, upcoming. Um, Trump's a pussy. See, this really isn't a critique of libertarianism, it's really just pointing out what Gary Johnson says. I mean, who cares? I mean, alright, he doesn't like that of Donald Trump. I can understand where certain libertarians are coming from because, you know, they don't really like stuff to do with the nationalism and they don't really like the protectionism and stuff like that, and I can understand. Donald Trump, of course, has went on the path of all the higher spending and stuff, he's just reallocated the spending into another part of the economy. Again, I don't really know too much about Trump in terms of deregulation. Is he deregulated enough? Again, I couldn't really tell you much about that. Okay, he's lowered the tax rates, but I would agree with Ron Paul in the argument of the fact that at the end of the day, it shouldn't be a case of reducing the tax rates, it should be abolishing the income tax and stuff like that. Or you might have heard about it from the Republican version of Bernie Sanders, Ron Paul. Or you turn into a libertarian overnight after completing Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrug. See, this is something that does my nothing, and every time that you come across somebody that just doesn't like capitalism at all, and they try to critique libertarianism, they always bring up the name about Ayn Rand. As if that's an argument, as if that's supposed to be an argument, as if a question is an argument. That doesn't, you know, discredit anything of what Ayn Rand has written about. It doesn't discredit anything, it do it's not even an argument. Just say her name and that's it. There you go, you've somehow proved the point, you've said her name. But what do libertarians believe in? Well, the core value of libertarianism is small government, which is a vague concept meaning pretty much whatever any individual libertarian wants it to mean. So anything from keeping the government out of your bedroom to the privatization of almost every function of government from education to the police force can fall under the libertarian agenda. Yeah, alright, that's part of libertarianism. But you've got to actually try and make an argument, some credible argument to say, here's why state-run services are better. He's not even providing an argument there, he's just saying, oh, the privatization of all these services, as if that's an argument. Aye, privatization of all these services. That's because under the free market, those services run far more efficient than what the government ever could run them. Because unlike the free market, it's no faced with all the economic calculation problem and knowledge problem etc. Central planning doesn't work, socialism doesn't work. Folk like us don't even understand what they're talking about. And he probably thinks the American healthcare system the day in terms of the main American healthcare market, he probably thinks that's you know, capitalist. Let's just take, for example, the government-run fire department. You look at the 1911 Ash Building fire. The fire started in the eighth flare. The government-run fire department turned up too late. The ladders were too few. The ladders were inadequate. There's a government-run fire department fee. And isn't it funny how 90 plus years later, the government-run fire engines the ladders can only reach to that of the 8th flare. A flare and a half? That's 90 plus years. There's a private company the day that produces these engines with ladders, where the engine ladders can reach between about the 30th and 33rd flares. And if you go back to 1911, there was 50 storey high buildings at the time. Again, what that is telling you is that the government run fire department is just inefficient. So it really shouldn't be a surprise that fiscally conservative Republicans are more likely to vote Libertarian than Democrats. However, on social issues, some of the libertarian policy positions are actually more progressive than an Occupy Wall Street drum circle. Let's clear something up here between the difference between that of lefties who support these social policies and that of libertarians, and I'm talking about true libertarians, we're not talking about a bunch of collectivists who try to call themselves libertarians and they're not. See, if you're somebody who's a collectivist, basically you support subordinating individuals' rights and liberty, right, you're not a libertarian at all. Socialism's the antithesis of liberty completely. Anybody who tries to correlate socialism in any regard with anything to do with individual ownership, haven't even got the slightest clue I thought of what you know socialism's about. When we're talking about this today with libertarianism, we're talking about that today with people who support individual liberty and whatever. In terms of socialists, they can support things all they want, gay marriage for example, but there was the example the socialists didn't like the fact that a private company was refusing to provide a service to a gay couple. Now the company had nothing I thought today with 
selling bacon cakes or whatever, right? But the government stepped in because of these socialists and punished that private company and put them out of business. That's the problem. Socialism in general and the mentality of socialists, they're very anti-libertarian. Even if they try to call themselves libertarian, they refuse to accept individual liberty. So they can claim that they support this today with all these socially liberal policies like we support gay marriage, therefore we're liberal. Ah, you're so liberal that you put a private company to business. So in other words, you want to stick a gun to somebody's head and say, you must provide this service or else. <laughs> How liberal are you? <laughs> That's why I don't even take them seriously when they talk about their liberal social policies. Whereas when it comes to libertarians who support the free market, they actually do have a credible argument because they support individual liberty. So there's actually a distinction there, a difference between socialists who are just a bunch of authoritarians. <laughs> And that of true libertarians who are free marketeers. Libertarian stance on social issues include making prostitution legal and legalizing all drugs, even the good ones. Of course, I fully support it. If they wish to sell themselves in that regard, then that's their individual choice. Why should I dictate what they do with their life? They should be able to do what they want. Government's controls always have the opposite side effect for what you try and attempt. How the hell do you think you saw a black market in the 1970s in the Soviet Union for crying out loud? See if all your laws worked. Please explain to me why for years upon years upon years that marijuana was illegal in this country across Britain. Yet growing up I would see kids who were out smoking it and th th there was plenty of it gone around. It didn't stop folk getting a hold of it. Libertarians also believe that no military action should be taken against foreign nations unless the US is attacked first. See if you've got a deterrent and you've got defence, folk can't twice about attacking you. You know what the problem is We invading these other countries? You might think you're serving justice, but do you know what you're actually doing? You're creating mere hatred so that when their youth grow up, you find mere terrorism. Now I'm not saying we live in some fantasy world where we should have some open door policy, because this is one of the things that gets misinterpreted with libertarianism, and it's why it's turned many people away from libertarianism, because they get the wrong end of the stick. And how are they getting the wrong end of the stick? Because people are feeding out garbage. Libertarianism does doesn't mean you have some open border and people just walk all the way free. You've got to remember the fact that you've got private property. You can't just walk onto anybody's private property and say do whatever the hell you like. Now whether or no they have a government or no, that's the role of the government to protect individuals' rights. It's not a case that you can just do whatever the hell you like. All of which sounds great to me. But what doesn't sound as great are libertarian ideals on the economic front. Libertarianism comes down to the belief that the principles that drive a free market economy can be applied to how humans govern themselves. It's this idea that an invisible hand that guides the free market will also drive human interaction with social order. This foundation is one that I disagree with because when unchecked, man motivated by self-gain will not ultimately do the right thing. This is why there are criminals, those who commit crimes even when there is a system that actively tries to prevent it. So what your problem is is today with the economic issues, today with the free market, but your argument is completely destroyed there with regards to crime because what the free market does is it basically disincentivizes crime, it reduces the incentive because there's mere opportunity for them to get by. The crime has been created because of government's intervention creating barriers to entry to the market. See when you create employment opportunity, fierce competition and their costs of living are far cheaper and they can get by easier in life and it's far easier for them to do business, there's less crime in the country. And then the whole purpose of civilization should be to ensure that everyone is fed, clothed, housed and not to create conditions so that the few can secure a substantially greater portion of resources while others are virtually left with nothing. What a load of nonsense. Now, although the 19th century wasn't exactly purely free market or nothing, it doesn't hide the very fact that the biggest gainers during the Industrial Revolution, during the 19th century, was actually the poorest of society. The masses were lifted out of poverty. Why do you always make these baseless claims? Again, I've proved it several times already. That the wealth between 1840 to 1900 and the Industrial Revolution proved it remained the same. It's all nonsense whenever or somebody says it all goes into the hands of a few and everything. You don't really understand the fact that they're all different from one another. They're not the same. How can you say that you can just guarantee everybody housing, guarantee? If that was the case then, let's just guarantee everybody lives in a mansion house. You're as bad 
is that of Marxists. You don't even understand the economic reality of scarcity. Plus the fact, housing also has its value based on where the property is. For example, if it's overlooking a beautiful beachfront, but no everybody is able to live in those property because it's just reality, it's scarcity. So you have to have some system there in order to ration these resources. So for example, these types of housing, how do you ration that if you've not got a price system? If it wasn't for the price mechanism system, and if you concede that the price mechanism system is important for the sake of then just that, then what's the problem? And no our housing's the same, no our food's the same. It's just like the previous argument I made. No everybody likes the same food. But I found like the chili jam and now I know where it is and I religiously buy that because I bloody love blue meat and chili jam. So it's definitely worth I mean a lot of it is like the most random things ever, like orange fondant creams. And like massive marshmallows. Why do they what right, this is what I want to know. Why does Audi and Lidl always have these giant marshmallows? And does anyone buy these? You can't he just collectivize food and say no, it's just guaranteed? Because you've got vegans, you've got those who are lactose intolerant, you've got those who are you've got nut allergies, you've got those who just don't like cheese for whatever reason being, you've got those who don't like mushrooms, you've got those you know, everybody's got different tastes. When it comes to you obsessed control freaks when you try to control prices. What happened when you tried your rent controls? Demand soared out of control and people started over occupying the housing and there ended up being a housing shortage. Yet as soon as the rent controls were removed, the housing shortage just magically disappeared. Oh, I wonder why that is. So in a libertarian society, who protects the unprotected? Who defends the rights of the defenseless? You know, individuals' rights are protected. It's not a case that it's lawless. It's just like you've got private security, etc. What's the difference between that of the free market and that today with that? I mean, the way that you're looking at it is if to say if it wasn't for government and all these government regulations, or where would their protection be? And companies are under severe pressure due to competition and their reputation. It's not a case that they can just do whatever they like, put out whatever they like, and just abuse the consumers. Good Good luck trying that one in the free market, because your company will only last long, I'll tell you that. Even libertarians acknowledge that a free market will drive a larger wealth disparity, which some believe will be offset by the trickling down of wealth and technology. Who cares about the fact that the rich are getting richer? At the end of the day, the poor are getting richer. That's all that matters. And it's all about equal opportunity. I say it before, and I'll say it again. Equality is not about equal outcomes. Equality is all down to equal opportunity. And see, so long as there's equal opportunity, nothing else matters. See, when you obsess yourself all this today with equality of everything else, you're going to have to control that. And that leads to the antithesis of liberty. What have you done to the economy as a result of it? You've destroyed that. But wealth inequality paired with deregulation creates an opportunity for haves to rule over the have-nots. This is one of the many reasons for regulation, to ensure that the rich few do not impose their will unjustly or destructively on the poor multitudes. Mate, you're talking complete and utter pish. It was your government's regulation and the mere government regulation you introduced into the market, the mere barriers you set down into the market. What your government regulation did was it weighed down the smaller competitors, wiped the small business people out the market and made giant corporations dominate it with all these monopolies, oligopolies and collusions. In other words, what your government regulation inevitably created was exactly what your complaining about. It wasn't the free market, it was your government regulation. Another libertarian belief is the idea that the government should not be allowed to impose its will on the citizenry. However, in a truly free market that promotes freedom of contract and deregulation, employers have a right to force rules that would never be permitted in our current democratic systems. You're living in a fantasy world where you seem to think companies can just do whatever they like and you ignore the fact that the companies require on returning customers and it's the customers that they rely upon in order to make a profit in the first place because that's the only way that you're going to make a profit in a free market. That is the only way. Now see if you're going to abuse the customers, you're not going to get very far. Another thing is, is the fact that you've get your reputation to look after. If you're not going to look after your, your reputation, how far are you going to get? You're not going to get very far, are you? Libertarianism is a rich man's ideal. It ostensibly gives ultimate freedoms and choice to everyone at the cost of helping the helpless. 
you like making things up as you go along and it's just like the baseless claim that you made that the wealth ended up in the hands of the few which just wasn't true at all and you don't even provide any historical example whatsoever. As far as I'm concerned when it was in the late 19th century, healthcare, education was all dirt cheap. Life was becoming more and more affordable to folk, they were getting richer every single year. All thanks to your government regulation has driven private sector costs through the roof and made education and healthcare unaffordable, which is why our pe people are complaining about the American healthcare system today. It completely ignores the reality of economic forces, which compel the poor to take jobs they don't want to and live where they don't want to just because they have to. So I don't even know where you seem to be going with this one because at the end of the day you've got to do certain things that you might not even want to. It's like I say, I mean, in terms of today's economy, there's less opportunity available to folks though. In a free market at least, people like myself would have more opportunity to make something of myself. That's not the case with this type of economy you've got today. And while individual freedoms extending to property rights are in the forefront of the core principles of libertarianism, deregulation in a free market economy that will lead to an even bigger wealth gap sounds like the prologue to the movie Elysium, starring Matt Damon. Again mate, you're honestly making things up as you go along. You know, during the industrial revolution in the United States, wealth remained the same. And th this was a period that your lot went around claiming that somehow the wealth was going into the hands of the few. And it really wasn't. Because it was all thanks to your strong government regulation and your strong government protectionism that led to the banking crisis. That was actually the very reason for prolonging that of the Great Depression. Because you wouldn't let the market be. All your obsession over controls or things created a problem. For example, trying to control interest rates, they ended up creating the boom and bust cycle. That's what contradicts you because it was all your government interference that led to the creation of all the monopolies. So you've not even got a leg to stun on. If you really want to understand what would happen in a libertarian society, watch that movie, watch Elysium. That's a libertarian utopia where the wealth disparity is abysmal and the eroding middle class is fully shifted well below the poverty line. It's the only ism we are middle class is capitalism. In other words, the more that you interfere in the market, the more that you introduce socialism in the market with your government intervention, the more you restrict the middle class because capitalism is the only ism we are middle class and that's the proof 100% that you've not even got a clue about economics. Now you may see the poor or the underclass as weak, you may see them as the losers in this giant meritocratic experiment that is the libertarian ideal, but weak as they are, there are going to be a hell of a lot more of them than there are of you. So in the hopes of avoiding the fate of the monarchy during the French Revolution, maybe it's best to retain welfare and at least a modest social safety net, if for no other reason than to keep them from grabbing their pitchforks and turning on you. Think of it as like a, like a riot tax. In the end, libertarianism is similar to communism. I know that sounds a little crazy, but hear me out. On its face, they're both noble but impossibly ambitious theories. One has individual freedom as its core principle and the other equality. However, in practice, both concepts lead to outcomes that aren't as pure. Unlike communism, we've yet to see libertarianism crumble after application, but given the current state of the Republican Party, we may see its influence soon enough. Yeah, I don't even know where you're coming from because at the end of the day, the bottom line is you're more than $220 trillion in debt, all because of the bailing out of the banks and that of today with the social security, etc. And that's what the current mixed economy is, it's corporatism. So what you're trying to tell me is, is it corporatism, economic fascism in other words, filled with all these monopolies, oligopolies and cartels, is somehow better off than that of a free market? I'll tell you something, at least Marxists, at least socialists have got the credibility to see that there's a problem with today's economy. See folk like you, you live away in some cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. In fact, I'm beginning to think that your organisation's paid, funded, backed by that of the likes of these, I don't know, George Soros. I mean, it's that bad that even Marxists sound more credible than what you do. <laughs> History isn't on your side. It's on our side. That's why when you made the baseless claims about the 19th century, you're being contradicted. What led to the creation of all these monopolies was all your government's intervention. You, you've literally taken a gun, pointed at your fit, and pulled the trigger. The most successful period in Sweden's economic history was when it had extremely low levels of government regulation, where the market was left be 
to strongly regulate itself, but according to you, because of the big extensive welfare state and all the wealth redistribution, somehow that would make people richer. How can you? How can you make people richer for a welfare state? It's called wealth redistribution. That's called division. You can't even multiply wealth by division. The fact that you need to be dealt that shows you there's a serious learning difficulty with you. <laughs> Your government run services are all faced with the economic calculation problem. Look at the mess your economy's in. You're trying to tell us that somehow folk are better off. <laughs> so I don't know about you folk, if you've got anything you would like to add in yourself, comment in the comment section below. Anything you would like to ask or that. Or just add in yourself like I say. Just comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And of course, if you've learned anything then great, whatever. Um at the end of the day, he's not got a clue what he's even talking about. He doesn't even have a clue about a free market. He's not even got a clue about economics. Uh, it's laughable. It's uh, he, he's the type of person who who thinks, oh, communism didn't work, but somehow socialism will work in the mixed economy. <laughs> It really, it really is that embarrassing, folk. So, anyway, thank you for watching my video. I shall talk to you later. Cheers.